truly. The tales and songs fall utterly short of your enormity. O oh, Smaug, the stupendous. We are the dwarves of Elabor. We have come to reclaim our homeland. I offer you my help. How do we know he won't betray us? We don't. There is no king under the mountain, nor will there ever be. It will not end here. With every victory, this evil will grow. Legolas has grown very fond of you. Do not give him hope where there is none. You have no right to enter that mountain. I have the only right. We've been blind. In our blindness, our enemy has returned. I found something in the Goblin Tunnels. What did you find? My courage. Good. You'll need it. Dragon fire and ruin. That is what you will bring upon us. He cannot see beyond his own desire. I will not risk this quest for the life of one burglar. His name is Bilbo. Elves. As I noted in the first Desolation of Smog trailer, they are my favorite group in Middle-earth, so I'm very excited to see them come front and center here. Uh, obviously Orlando Bloom as Legolas is a fan favorite, it's the role that made him famous. Uh, and I also think Evangeline Lilly looks like she's doing a very good job in her role, it looks like a good female character. And I think Lee Pace looks very cool as this uh, suspected evil elf king, I think that looks really interesting. So I liked that a lot. Uh, I also thought it was very funny to see Richard Armitage playing uh, a dwarf opposite Luke Evans, because in the first film, since they were all dwarves and a hobbit, uh, you know, only Gandalf towered over them. So you kind of got used to everybody basically being the same height. But then to see a Richard Armitage, who I think looks tall, like he just in his facial features, he has a tall look, to be reminded that he's still a dwarf next to uh, Luke Evans, just was kind of a little bit shocking and interesting to see. They have, uh, they have very good special effects here. We didn't see a wide shot here, but I'm sure they'll pull off the effect. Uh, the other thing about the trailer, though, my uh, only problem was that it was very dark, literally. And it was hard for me to see a lot, of, a lot of the action, what was going on this time, whereas the first trailer was brighter. But here, you know, I really, especially toward the end, I was just like, I was peering at my computer screen, and then I just saw my own reflection because it was basically a black screen. And so that, I was like, is that me or is that the movie? And it was just very bizarre. But I did like, also, I did like Benedict Cumberbatch's voice for Smog. I'm very happy that he doesn't just sound like Benedict Cumberbatch because, as a couple of you have been noting, Benedict Cumberbatch is just shy of overexposure at this point. He's almost there. Uh, and he might get there during award season because I know that Disney is pushing him very hard for the Fifth Estate. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But I, I'm pleasantly surprised with what I see here. But something else I wanted to mention uh, that I was thinking of while I was watching this trailer was that I think that the success of the Hobbit films is probably what gave Warner Brothers the confidence to go and expand the Harry Potter franchise as well to revisit that with the Fantastic Beasts spinoff. Uh, and this is a new trend. Hollywood, uh, I mean, they tried to do it with Indiana Jones, but it wasn't very successful. But they've had, they had success, obviously, here at the Hobbit, and that's uh, revisiting franchises and um, you know expanding them and continuing on. Uh, you see, you've seen it, obviously, I think most famously with uh, the Star Wars films, the prequels, they are the, they, I mean, The Phantom Menace is the only Star Wars film to be in the Billion Dollar Club. So those were, that was a set of films that was uh, successful financially, if not so creatively. Uh, but there is a whole generation, you know, who were kids when those films came out, who, who adore them and actually think they're, they're good. So, you know, 
I, I always feel that it's hard to judge film uh, from a, 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 an opinion criteria because there are so many different opinions. That's why often some of you ask why I'm so into, you know, uh, awards and box office, and that's because I think that's the only uh, impartial judge of a film's success. Uh, but anyway, so Star Wars kind of, I think, did okay. I think it's good their next group of films are going to be sequels, so they're not so tied down. Because that's a slight problem I see with the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, with The Hobbit. It so has to be so heavily referencing the Lord of the Rings trilogy because that happens afterwards. And that's really a pitfall with prequels that, you know, everybody knows what's going to happen. They know the fate of their characters. Like, for instance, when Evangeline Lilly is like, um, you know, Legolas and... It, there, obviously there's some romance there and her father, or, you know, the elf king is saying, I think that's her father, the elf king saying, oh, you know, don't give him any false hope. And I'm like, well, we all know it's false hope because they're not together in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So that kind of takes away some excitement there. Uh, and Fantastic Beasts will also be a prequel. So I hope that since it's so removed from the Harry Potter timeline, I hope that Fantastic Beasts only loosely references Harry Potter. Because I really do think this is uh, hard when you're tied down and, you know, the fate of certain characters is already known. And we're seeing a similar problem also for you Legend of Korra fans, or you uh, Avatar The Last Airbender fans. Legend of Korra, particularly in its second season, is really literally split in half between trying to reference the uh, original group with Aang and his friends and then trying to give a new storyline to Korra and her friends. So it's all very interesting. Uh, as for the Hobbit films, I feel that while, you know, I was, I was I had suspected the first one wouldn't reach a billion, but it did, uh, largely due, I think, to fan, the fan base for the films and also 3D IMAX ticket prices. But um, at the same time, I don't feel the same excitement uh, that there was around the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's, you know, it's not groundbreaking storytelling. It's just, it's more cozy revisiting something that everybody likes. And um, I, I can't quite decide if that's great or if that's, um, you know, if that's a little bit lazy filmmaking and storytelling and lazy from a business perspective. You know, uh, I think it would be great if we could continue these franchises uh, at, at the highest level possible in terms of quality as well. And not just, you know, kind of, you know, give people more of what they want, give them more of what they want, but also things that they didn't even know they want. That's the trick to, to, to good uh, entertainment. So that's my thoughts on uh, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, second trailer. I'm definitely going to see it. And I think I didn't see the first one in theaters. I got a screener from somebody because it was award season, but I'm going to see this one in theaters because I did have fun watching the first one. And this looks like it has even better action and elves. All right, write your thoughts down below. You can check out these other episodes right now.